Hello and welcome back audience, my name is Massive Brad and welcome back to my FIFA 19 Liverpool career mode. Now before we get into today's episode, I just want to say a huge big thank you for the love and support on the channel and as always guys at the start of these episodes, we're quickly going to recap on the previous and the three previous games where Watford in the Premier League, Burnley in the Premier League and then the second leg against Spurs in the Carabao Cup. But the first game being Watford, unfortunately in this game we did actually manage to go 1-0 down. We were a little bit stunned by Watford, they come out, they attacked well and they did go 1-0 up and that didn't help because unfortunately we played the ball into our own box and Troy Deeney was there to head home but we managed to battle back and we did go on to beat them 3-1 we of course played that game and it was a great result coming off the back end of some more great results we've had over the last couple of episodes so going into the Burnley game which was the simulated game you guys know now every episode we play three games we actually physically play two and we also simulate one the Burnley game was the one I chose to simulate and to be honest Ah, the EA gods didn't do us any favours. We actually lost that game 2-1. And not only did we lose that game to Burnley, it was our first loss of the season in the Premier League. We were going so well, but I knew it was only a matter of time before we simulated one of these games where we should really win it. But unfortunately, we lose it. And the first loss in this Liverpool career mode season 3 in the Premier League was, of course, against Burnley. So a little bit gutted about that. But then we did finish on a high. We bounced back and we managed to beat Spurs 6-2, which means we beat them 2-0 in the first leg, 6-3 in the second leg, which is unbelievable. The episode was full of goals, but it meant we beat them 8-3. Spurs, Tottenham Hotspur, a big London club, a team that challenged for top four every year in the Premier League. We beat them 8-3 over the two legs in the semi-finals of the Carabao Cup. And because we won both games over the two legs, it means we are now in the final of the Carabao Cup, where I do believe we are facing off against Arsenal. But the three games in today's episode, we've got Fleetwood in the Emirates FA Cup. We are at home, and it is going to be a game I play because we're trying, obviously you guys know, which we'll be doing in the next episode, episode 85, the fan objectives. One of them this year is Retirement 7, and it's about winning all seven pieces of silverware that are up for grabs. We've already won three. We have four more to go. The four to go are the Premier League, the Champions League, the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup. We're in the final of the Carabao Cup. But it's a simple game like that against Fleetwood that we could easily simulate where on paper we should probably absolutely kill them off. But it's a game like that, very similar to the Burnley one. We'd go and lose 2-1, be knocked out of the FA Cup and then we can't win all seven pieces of silverware. And then you guys at home can't win the prizes for this season's fan objective. So we're going to play the game against Fleetwood so that realistically we're in control. If we lose, we lose. But at least I can say I played the game and I played the best I can. We're then going to play the Everton game. Now, I know realistically it's probably better to play the Chelsea game. But we're away from home at Everton. But we're at home against Chelsea. And you guys know that at home games, when you simulate them, you normally play a lot better. If you look at the Burnley game, we were away and we lost. So I would rather simulate the home games because there is a better chance that you will win. It's also the fact it's the Liverpool derby. And I want to play it. Even though Chelsea are a big club, the Liverpool derby is one that we have to play. So we're playing the first two games in today's episode against Fleetwood and Everton. And then we're going to simulate the final game in today's episode against Chelsea. But we have got a few things to talk about, guys. Because it's not only are we playing three games in today's episode... We're also finishing off the January transfer window and this is the last transfer window we are having at Liverpool. I confirmed a few episodes ago, I've mentioned it a few times now, that at the end of Season 3 at Liverpool, I'll be hanging up my suit, shirt and tie and I will be retiring at Liverpool after a happy three years of winning tremendous amounts of trophies, bringing some unbelievable players to Liverpool. I will be retiring and wishing them the best of luck in the future. And then, of course, I will be starting another career mode or road to glory or something else that should take up enough time to get us all the way to September for when FIFA 20 drops. But the reason I mentioned the transfer window is you guys have been voting on a straw poll from episode 81. And I'll put it on screen now. And that was, what should we do for our final transfer window? And I asked you guys, should we make it an unrealistic transfer window sign? You know, players like Messi and Ronaldo, players that you left down below in the comment section. Should we do Liverpool new and old, which was my idea of bringing back players that still currently play for Liverpool and also bring back some legends that have recently played for Liverpool or over the last 10 years or whatnot. And then we also had realistic, which was we keep it realistic and we only look to buy players that are currently linked to a Liverpool. Now, thank you to all 10 people that voted, but it's a joint win. Unrealistic and Liverpool new and old have won the vote on four votes. So what I've decided to do, guys, which I'll show you here right now, 
is we have a few unrealistic signings. We also have some Liverpool players that still currently play for Liverpool that aren't in this career mode that we've sadly sold, which we're going to look at bringing back. And then we also have some Liverpool legends that have played for Liverpool over the last 10, 12 years that are not at Liverpool anymore. Now, as I scroll down this website, I used a website called transfermarket.co.uk. This was to go down a list of players that have played for Liverpool over the last 10 odd years, and I was going to see if they were on here. And there were some players like Daniel Agger, would have loved to have brought him back to Liverpool. But I forgot that in real life, we're in 2019, but in this career mode, we're in 2020. Now this game, we're three seasons in. So although they might be playing in real life, it doesn't mean they're still playing in this career mode. So unfortunately, two players that I really wanted to go after, which was Fernando Torres Fernando Torres, Fernando Torres and Daniel Agger, they've retired in this career mode save, so we can't buy them, which was a little bit of a bummer. But as I scroll down this list, there was plenty of players. Obviously, this year's departures, we had Daddy Ings, Sturridge, Moreno, Conor Randall, Bogdan and Shed Giorgio. Now, when I looked at all those players, I thought, Daniel Sturridge, Moreno, Conor Randall and Adam Bogdan, they were players that have been let out of contract, so we didn't sell them. They're not current Liverpool players anymore, so I thought, they're not going to get on the list. They're not players that I think should still be at Liverpool. They were released, their contracts have come to the end, and I just think, we're looking for players that are still Liverpool players, like Ben Woodburn, like Divock Origi, like Joel Matip. They are still current Liverpool players that we have sold in this Liverpool career mode. Them three players are coming back to Liverpool. Then when you look at some legends that have played for Liverpool, Lucas Leiva, massive Liverpool fan, even though he's out at Lazio now, still a huge Liverpool fan at heart. Martin Scale, unbelievable defender at Liverpool, he's out at Atlanta, we're bringing him back. Pepe Reina, absolutely unbelievable goalkeeper that was at Liverpool, Liverpool fan through and through, he's out at Milan, we're going to bring him back. And then we have two unrealistic signings, at the bottom of the shortlist. But as I go down this list that I was telling you about on the transfer market, there were so many players. You've got Dominic Solanke, Danny Ward, Ragnar Klavan, uh, Harry Wilson, Karius, Marco Grujic, Emery Chan, John Flanagan, Adam Bogdan again going out on loan this time, um, Ben Woodburn, Philippe Coutinho, Mamadou Sacco, Divock Origi going out on loan, Lucas Leiva, Kevin Stewart, Daniel Sturridge going out on loan, uh, Jordan Williams, Christian Benteke, Jordan Ive, Joe Allen, Martin Skirtle, Thiago Elori, Luis Alberto, Brad Smith, Colo Torre was another one that I looked for, I thought bringing Colo, 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 bring him back to Liverpool, but sadly he's retired, obviously he's not playing football anymore, he went to Celtic on a free and he's now retired, Raheem Sterling was on there, Ricky Lambert, Mario Balotelli, the list goes on, the amount of Liverpool players that have gone through Liverpool is crazy. You go down to departures in 14, 15. You've got Luis Suarez, Daniel Aga, Pepe Reina, Martin Kelly, Asuma Asadi, Suso, Suso out of Milan, Divock Origi going out on loan again, Jordan Ibe out on loan, Thiago Alori, Sebastian Cortes, Iago Aspas. There were so many players. Andy Carroll, John Joe Shelby, Stuart Downing, Fabio Barini. You guys get the point. There's so many players that have departed Liverpool. So what I've done is I just went through a few of my favourites. So the three players that are going to come back that are still Liverpool. Now, obviously, I was telling you guys then that the straw poll was joint. So you guys want some unrealistic signings. You also want some current Liverpool players and also older Liverpool players that have played for Liverpool coming back to Liverpool. So the new players, or the new Liverpool, should I say, is going to be Ben Woodburn. Divock Origi and Joel Matip. They are still Liverpool players currently. We've sold them in this career mode, but we're going to bring them back to Liverpool. Old Liverpool players that are a bit of legends, that are still playing football, but they're not at Liverpool, that were massive Liverpool fans, is going to be Lucas Leiva, Martin Skirtle and Pepe Reina. So we've got three, unre uh, three old Liverpool players and we've got three still current Liverpool players going back. And then, of course, the top vote, which was unrealistic, or joint top with four votes. The two... Unrealistic signings I am going to bring to Liverpool is Leo Messi and Kylian Mbappe. Just think if Liverpool signed Kylian Mbappe. Imagine how unbelievable that would be. But that's how I've broken it down, guys. Obviously, you've got to understand that we've had a great three seasons and I don't want to ruin the team. I could go and sign Ronaldo, Messi, Suarez, Mbappe, uh, Tony Cruz. 
but I don't want to change the starting eleven we have now. We're winning. So as the saying is, if it's not broke, don't fix it. What we have right now works. So any of these players coming in, apart from maybe Mbappe, maybe Woodburn, they're probably not going to get into the team. They're just players that I'm going to bring back to Liverpool so when we retire, hopefully they can retire with us. Now, when you look at Leo Messi, we can't buy him. Okay, we're going to approach to sign him and he'll join in season four. We're retiring at the end of season three, but I still think he's a great player to come in for the new manager for season four. It's a great signing. It's an unrealistic signing. Leo Messi to Liverpool, what are the chances? It's unrealistic. You guys want it unrealistic, so that's what you're getting. But unfortunately, we're not going to actually see him play in a Liverpool kit because he's not going to join us till the end of the season. But without any further ado, guys, we need to jump into this and we need to start getting some of our current stars back we need to get some of our ex Liverpool players back and we need to make those two unrealistic signings so first up we've got Ben Woodburn currently at West Brom Albion he's got a release clause of 15.2 but he's valued at 9.5 you know what guys we've got the money we've got half a billion 500 million I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna stress this we're just gonna pay the release clause we've got the money so let's just do it give Okarigi He's got a release clause as well. So you know what? Not even going to bother. Just pay his release clause. Lucas Lever, 5.5 million pound value. He hasn't got a release clause. So let's get into the deal with Lazio. Tell you what, guys. I'm in the office right now recording. Poof, it is hot today. The sun is beaming down on the window. And I'm starting to get a little bit of a sweat on. And I am excited for this episode because we've got some great games coming up. We've also got half a billion pounds to spend. And we're bringing Messi and M back to Liverpool. So let's go ahead and offer a trip. Now, I'm not even going to mess around here. 6 million, 500,000 more. He's 34. Make it happen. Boom. Fair offer. There we go. Three already signed. Joel Matip hasn't got a release clause. Let's get into it with Roma. We just need to fly through these. We want to bring players back to Liverpool. Current value is 17.5. Okay, let's drop 20 mil on him. 20 mil. I don't even know what we sold him for. I should have looked to see what we sold. 27. You're playing hardball now, okay? Make it 24 and you've... Oh, let's just go 25. Make it 25, you've got a deal. He's 29, 25. We are spending half a billion pounds in today's episode. Scare him. 2.2 million. Let's buy him. Let's make this happen, lads. Let's bring some legends back to Liverpool. Let's offer 3 mil. I think that's fair. I mean, how old is he now? He's 36. Drop 3 mil on him. Surely... Atlanta are going to accept that. They have done 3 mil. Boom. We are flying through these. Pepe Reina, 2.6 mil. Let's get on it. Do you know what I've just realised? We can't buy him. He's only got six months left on his contract. He's going to be like another Messi. Okay, let's make it happen. Let's just go uh, prospect. Is he going to accept that? Is he happy with that? That's not going to work sporadic. That's fine. Let's just fly through this because we've got transfers to do and then we've also got contracts. Uh, let's offer him um, four years. He's probably going to retire soon so I don't know if... He only wants one year, so he's probably going to retire after the end of season four. So, yeah, we're still bringing him to Liverpool. That's the important thing. No release clause. I'd expect not. Come on, are you going to offer me what you want as a wage? No, you're not. Okay, let's offer you 30k. Let's offer you a half a mil signing on bonus. What about that? Half a mil, 30k. Make it happen, Pepe. There we go. There's the first signing officially done. Pepe Reina is coming back to Liverpool. Now, we've got all these ready signed up. We've just got to go through contracts. Let's do the same with Leo Messi. Now, the good thing about Leo Messi is we don't have to pay a fee. We just got to pay his wages. And I'm sure his wages, well, 310,000, they are going to be. He's not going to come down much on them, is he? We're going to see what we can offer him here. Let's count it. I mean, we're retiring anyway in six months' time. He only wants three. Do you know what? He's 33. I forget that he's only 29, 30 in real life, but we're three years into this season. Doesn't want a release clause. I'm happy with that, except let's go, go, go. So, what we'll do is, we'll just straight away, we'll remove that bonus, and we'll just stick that up to two and a half. Two and a half million signing on, 230 grand a week. Are you accepting that? He wants 250. Do you know what? Have it, Messi. The GOAT has now just signed for Liverpool as well. And finally, let's get Mbappe to Liverpool. We've got to buy him from PSG. He's currently 112.5 million. What are we dropping on this, man? Did we just drop 150? I don't want no messing around. I don't want nobody to walk out. Let's drop 140 first. What are we saying here, PSG? 140 mil. Boom! And it's agreed. 140 mil for Kylian Mbappé. Now let's get down to the nitty gritty bit. Let's get down to the contracts. I don't care what we give these people as a contract. I really don't. 
Yeah, you can have that. We're just going to fly through this. Let's keep it flowing here. Keep it flowing. Five years. You, you're going to accept that? He's happy with five years. Come on, Ben Woodburn. Ben Woodburn. Come back to Liverpool. We've got to offer him a wage. Let's give him 30k. Let's give him half a mil signing on, just like we did for Pepe Reina. 30k, half a mil signing on. Well, you're getting a bit greedy, but you can have it, okay? Just take it. Take the money. Take it, take it, take it. Divock Origi, the Champions League legend at Liverpool. We've got to bring him back, and that is the reason I am bringing him back. Yep, you can have that, no problem. Currently on 78,000 at Wolves. Let's give him five years. You're going to accept that. He wants five years. Happy days. Doesn't want a release clause. We are happy with that. We're just going to keep churning this out here. Keep churning it. Salary, is he going to... No, he's not going to give us a clue. Let's offer him a... Oh, let's just go 80k. Just give him a mil. 80k and a million signing on. What are we say in there? Boom. Fair offer. Divock Origi is back at Liverpool. Lucas Leiva. Let's bring him back to Liverpool. This is a madness. We are spending some big money. At least we will be in a few moments' time. Uh, he's going to be sporadic. Let's offer him that. He's 34. He's not going to get in the team. He wants three years. If you want three years at Liverpool, that's fine. We're just bringing some legends back. We're bringing some current players. And we're also bringing some unrealistic players to Liverpool. Right, let's drop. Remove that bonus. We'll up, up that up to 850. You want 69. I mean, you want a pay rise of 34, which is crazy. But if you accept that, Lucas Leibers back at Anfield. Joel Matty, let's cheer this out. This episode is a madness. You guys are probably sitting there thinking, this is crazy, Brad. You're spending all sorts of money here. There we go. Three years. Take it. We're retiring in six months. I just want some current Liverpool players, some legends back, and some unrealistic signings. That's what you guys asked for. That's exactly what you're going to get. Let's offer them uh, 70k a week, and let's offer them a mil signing on. What are we saying, Joel Matip? Are you accepting that? Of course he's accepting. Oh, it's insulting. Oh, Joel Matip just rejected coming back to Liverpool. Oh, that is crazy. That is the only negative point we have had so far. Let's keep going. We may have to get Joel Matip back to the club at the end of today's episode instead of the start. Martin Scale, you are coming back to Liverpool, son. You are a legend. I watched you growing up. Four years. What you're saying, he's probably going to say no. He'll be 40 there. One year. Do you know what? One year. Should have just offered him one year. He's 36 anyway. Okay. We're happy with no release clause. I don't know what the release clause would be. Oh, God, you're wanting a pay rise, aren't you? You know what? Just take it. Just take my money. Take it, take it, take it. And the most exciting signing of the episode, Killian Mbapp. What are we saying? He's going to want a big wage. What's he wanting? Quarter of a mil a week? 250k a week, probably? Four years? Do you know what? We're retiring. We'll take the four years right now, Mbapp. Or oh, Mbappe. Let's go. Yeah, he doesn't want all these scores. Let's find me wage. We've got to offer him a wage. Okay, let's offer him. Let's go 250. 250, let's offer him 250, let's offer him, uh, oh, we want to make sure we get him, let's offer him 4 mil signing on, boom, accepting that, boom, Kylian Mbappe has joined Liverpool, that is what I'm talking about, the only player that rejected it was Joel Matip, we got Pepe Reina and Messi coming at the start of season 4, there you go ladies and gentlemen, you've had your unrealistic signings in Messi and Mbappe, you've had your new Liverpool players coming in, which of course is like Matip who's still a current player but we haven't got him just yet, we got Ben Woodburn, we got Divock Origi and we've also got old ex-Liverpool players, we've got Pepe Reina coming, we've got Martin Skirtle. we've got Lucas Leiva coming back, made some incredible signs, I would have loved to have brought Colo Torre. Uh, Daniel Agger, Fernando Torres would have loved to have brought so many players back but we just sadly couldn't do it but now there's the transfers out the way we've now got this game up next against Fleetwood it's a big one it's in the FA Cup and we need to be getting through it and this is the lineup we are hopeful to do it with we've got Manny out on the left wing Timo Werner striker Salah out on the right wing Gini is now done linking up with Naby Keith in the central midfield role a little deeper we've got Fabinho in the central defensive midfield and then Kieran Tierney Jimenez Tor and Semedo at the back with Alisson between the sticks now I know a few of you might be like Brad are you not putting Mbappe into the team are you not putting any of those new players into the team no, guys, I'm not. I may play Mbappe in today's episode, but right now, we still have a job to do. And this lineup right here, and these players that have been playing week in and week out, are the team that are helping us win. We are on a winning streak. We are winning things. We are going far in competitions. I don't want to come in and put all these new players straight into the squad and just expect us to go on and win all sorts. It's not going to happen. So, realistically, if we get... 
you know, another month or two in and we've boxed off the Premier League and no matter what happens, we're going to win it, then yes, I'll start playing Lucas Leiva. I'll start playing Ben Woodburn. I'll bring Mbappe into the team. I'll happily do that. But right now, the excitement's gone out the window now. We've done our transfers. You wanted unrealistic. Liverpool, new players that are still playing and old players that are ex-Liverpool players. We've done that. Now, we have to take a breather, step back and realise... We've still got the fan objectives to look over. And most importantly, we still need to be winning games like this one up next against Fleetwood Town. Oh my, oh my. Have those transfers just got me hyped for this episode. We've brought well, Kylian Mbappe to Liverpool, which yeah, every Liverpool fan Harris. would FA adore if Mbappe come to Liverpool. Imagine that. Mane, Mbappe, Salah, with Bobby Firmino behind. We would have the deadliest three and four goal forwards. We'd have the best attacking force in the world. And we've just brought Mbappe to Liverpool. Absolutely unbelievable. We've got Leo Messi signing next season. Pepe Reina signing next season. We've got Scale back at Liverpool. I'm just happy we brought the likes of you know Martin Scale. Lucas Leiva. I'm glad we've brought them back because I'm hopeful that they will retire at the end of season four and retire a Liverpool player. That is exactly what we want to happen. But right now, let's breathe. Forget about the transfers. I'm so pumped for today's episode. And let's get this first half kicked off with Timo Werner. And let's see what damage we can do to Fleetwood. Up now to Timo Werner. Straight through now to Mo Salah. Look at this. Mo Salah paces it up now. We're going to have Sadio Mane at the back post. Side for home. It's 1 0 Liverpool. Well, I didn't really expect when I look at the players that we have, the prospect that this team have, the energy and passion this team have, I wouldn't have expected us to lose or draw to Fleetwood if I'm completely honest. I know it's football and anything can happen. And that may be there, a bit of a side-footed, sweaty goal. But we're here to take over. We're here to win games. So if we have to sweaty and take an easy goal, we'll sweaty and take an easy goal. It's as simple as one, two, three. It's Dempsey. Like she's done for being here. Let's play it through now. Let's go round to Timo Werner. Here we go. Timo Werner is released here. Timo Werner through a goal. And he puts it in the back of the net. It's 2-0 Liverpool. Well, we need Timo Werner to be scoring at every opportunity he possibly can. Because we've got one of the fun objectors. Is there however many Speed. Timo Werner, Control how many goals well. he scores in, in all competitions, it we will donate that amount of money to charity right. at the oh, end of the neighbor. season. If he scores 20 goals, we'll be donating £20 to charity. If he scores 50 goals, we'll be donating £50 to charity. So we need Timo Werner to be scoring as many as he can at every opportunity that he can. And he has just scored against Fleetwood. Inside to Fabinho. Fabinho playing through now to Genie, poking it through now to Timo Werner, who's trying to get the better of the defender he has done. Let's play it around to Mo Salah. Little dink in now for Mane! There we go, Mane finds the second. Well, this is going to be a cricket score, what we say in 7 8 0. Timo Werner intercepts that one. Little dink through to Sadio from Mo Salah, who takes it on the acrobatic volley and puts it in the back of the net. It's Mane's second, and it's 3 0, and it's not even half time. Close this down. Dempsey coming forward. Oh. It is long. Out wide to Carga. Don't let them get in behind. And there we go. The referee is going to blow for half time. Realistically, we have definitely been the dominant team. with 3 0 up. I think this could easily end 6 or 7 0. We've got the home fans behind us. We're absolutely dominating right now. But I am going to look at making one change. We're going to go Gina Wisnardum off for Alex Oxley chain You've got to remember, we've got our starting 11. We want to keep them fully fit. We want to keep them fresh. And we've also got Everton up next. And Gini Wijnaldum is a player we need to be getting into that starting eleven. I think I'm going to go for another 10, 15 minutes. Then probably look at bringing probably Cessna on for Mane. Maybe Naby Keita off for Coutinho. Maybe Ramsey. Maybe take Salah off and bring on Junior. I'm not too sure, but it all depends on the fitness of the rest of the team. But just the one change right now. Gini Wijnaldum for the Ox. And let's go ahead and get this second half kicked off with Fleetwood. Playing it back. Can we find a few more goals in this second half? Fabinho loses the ball. The yeah, he's lost it. Let's track it down, lads. Salah. Semedu. And Salah. Fabinho. Straight through now to Timo Werner. There we go. It's 4 0. Timo Werner scores a brace. Can he find his hat trick before the end of this game? Timo Werner showing the tiger that he is. Scrolling on the floor, showing everyone that he is a lion waiting to pounce. And he does just that. 
Beautiful bit of football there for Fabinho. Release the ball first time through to Timo Werner. And it ends up in the back of the net. Ball kicked out with that Fabinho. Nicely done. It's Werner. Out now to Salah, now. Salah. Salah loses the ball there. Let's keep going here, lads. Keep fighting for it. Nicely done. Play it through now. That's the ball through to the Ox. Let's play it out wide now to Timo Werner. Timo Werner going through here. On for his hat trick. Can Werner find it? Onto the right foot. Locks a bend the one. And he completes his hat trick. Well, there's another three pound added to the charity donation. Timo Werner doing all, all sorts of flips. And he finds his hat trick. And I think with the hat trick coming in the 68th minute, we will also look at now making some changes. Let's get some of the players that we need fit for Everton onto the bench and get them rested. So we are going to bring Ryan Sessegnon on for Sadio Mane. And I think the last move is going to be, it's going to be Naby Keita for Coutinho. And they're going to switch Coutinho and the Ox. I'm hoping Salah is going to get back fully recovered for the Everton game. But if he doesn't, he will certainly be back for the simulated game against Chelsea. It's 5-0. I said it was going to be 6 or 7 nil against Fleetwood Town. We've still got 20 minutes to go. Can we push this scoreline above and beyond? Timo well, Werner is the Ox. The Ox is going to ping one over now to Mo Salah. Mo Salah looking to get ahead of his man. Let's cut this back. Mo Salah ping one in now. Looking for Ryan Cessio on his own. Look at that. That is what we're talking about. 6 nil. Ryan Cessio in the box. On his own. Fox in the box. And he just heads that one home. It's 6-0. We're cruising this. Honestly, lads, you've probably only seen one or two misses from us. And the rest have been goals. We've had so many chances. What a ball in from Mo Salah. And Ryan Sessegnon heads that one home. It's 6-0. And we've still got seven minutes to go. Can we find that seventh goal like I predicted? Two minutes to go. Can we find a seventh goal? It'd be nice to come from Timo Werner to add another pound to the charity donation. Headed on from Fabinho up to Timo Werner. Werner looks at putting it at home now. Let's put this ball straight in now for Ryan Sessio. Ryan Sessio has missed it. <laughs> oh, he's offside anyway, but imagine he'd have scored that. Ryan Sessio goes for the acrobatic. He is offside there without a doubt. He just throws himself at the ball and completely misses it. Fabinho out wide now to Semedu. Semedu playing it up now. It's playing inside. If we can with Timo Werner, I was looking for Fabinho. It's not going to happen. Let's, we're going to have to win this ball back pretty quick if we want to find that last goal. Mo Salah through to Timo Werner. Werner through on goal. Werner's going to take it. Werner scores. I was going to square it to Ryan Sessio. But I thought, you know what? If we can score a fourth and add another pound to the charity donation, we'll do just that. I sure took the risk, I took it with Timo Werner, he finds his fourth and he puts his 7-0 up just like I predicted. Well done Timo Werner, you have been outstanding and fully deserved man of the match in this game. As Fleetwood Town kick us off, surely it's only a matter of seconds. Here we go, the referee blows for full time. We've beat Fleetwood Town, we've knocked them out of the FA Cup and we've done it with an absolutely unbelievable scoreline. Timo Werner, five attempts. Four in the back of the net. That man has been a beast. And I tell you what, Mbappe's come in as well to now challenge Bobby Firmino and Timo Werner. Mbappe has joined Liverpool. Messi coming next season. This team is unbeatable. We eat teams for breakfast. Unbelievable scoreline. 13 shots, 9 on target. To be fair, Fleetwood... Fleetwood actually played quite well. I didn't think they'd had so many shots and shots on target. They end up having seven with five of them being on target, which is very consistent. They just weren't clinical enough on the day. Timo Werner, man of the match, match ball, four goals, 10.0 rating. What a player and what a game that was. Right, and here we are, guys, at match day for the Liverpool derby. And I am excited for this one because Kylian Mbappe is on our bench unfortunately as well Harry Kane has now overtook Mo Salah he's currently on 14 Harry Kane Mo Salah's only on 13 so we really need Mo Salah to be back to his scoring ways but unfortunately he's not started in this game against Everton he's not fully fit and it's not worth risking him because we've got Chelsea up next as well. But we've got Sadio Mane out on the left wing. Roberto Firmino, a striker. Junior out on the right wing. Junior is now linking up with Naby Keita in the central midfield role. Sandro Tonali a little deeper in the central defensive midfield. And then Robertson and Van Dijk. Gomez and Trent at the back with Allison between the sticks. First things first. Let's give Big Verge his armband back. That's what we need. The big man. The armband. The captain of Liverpool. 
big Virgil van Dijk. We are one game in hand on Chelsea. If we win, we'll move up to 59 points, putting us 15 points clear on second position, Chelsea. We have absolutely smashed it. And the signings we have just made at the start of today's episode, without a doubt, will take us further and further into the future with the team that we already have. We've got such a great squad, and to just keep adding and adding and adding, we are seriously going to dominate in many more years to come. But let's go ahead and get into this game with... Ever, uh, blah, blah, blah. Get into this game against Everton at Goodison Park, and it's very important. It's the blue side versus the red side. The red side versus the blue side. I mean, after the game we've just played, without a doubt, we are going to kill off Everton. Well, I love a Liverpool derby, and I'm pretty sure since we started the Liverpool in season one, we've beaten them on every single occasion. I don't remember losing to Everton. We haven't really lost many games throughout the whole three seasons, especially in the Premier League. And I don't think Everton are one where we would struggle Welcome realistically. The squad that we've got, Chris I'm looking Park forward on potentially to Everton bring Killian Mbapp onto the field Smith, for his substituted debut for Liverpool. But it is going to be Everton to get us kicked off in this first half period. Let's get it underway and let's do Everton over. Here's Robertson. Robertson on his right foot this time, puts a ball in, looking for Junior at the back post, clear the way. Now Bikita picks that one up, gives it to Junior. Junior coming forward, let's go Junior. Little bit of skill, Junior gets a shot off. Takes a reflection off Keenan, it's out for a Liverpool corner, that was close and probably our best chance so far. Sakai coming forwards, watch out there Robert, watch the running behind. Ball over the top Robert, you should have been running with that one. Ball inside now, nicely done, Kevin Volland. Back to Sigerson, let's get a foot in there, it's one nil Everton. You know what, they don't even deserve that. That is the unfortunate thing with football. They do not, do not deserve it. And we're 1-0 down to Everton. And that is not what we wanted. 1-0 down to the Blues. The fans will be going mental at Goodison Park. Ball through now to Bobby. Bobby looks to come away with a ball. Snyder takes it off him. Back to Naby. Through to Bobby. Bobby going to lay it backwards. Let's go through to Sadio Mane now. Mane waiting for the over at Robertson. Nice ball in now from Robertson to Junior at the back post. Junior was there. But Fabian Delph actually manages to get to it and it's out for a corner. Can we bring it back to level terms? Right before half time. Come on, Virgil van Dijk. Put this one home for us. Some nice ball in. Van Dijk's there. Ball in. It's clear the way for Mina and it's out for another Liverpool corner. Right on half time. Let's go for Gomez this time round. Can Gomez make the difference? Come on, Gomez. Get him off. Get off your man. Nice ball in from it's Gomez. Gomez, great position. Go is there? It's just wide a goal. Well, we're going in at half time. Shockingly, 1 0 down to the Blues. I said at the start of this game, I don't think we've lost to them throughout the whole three seasons. Have it jinxed us because we're now 1 0 down and we're certainly going to look at making a change right now. I think we need something a little bit more in the midfield. So I'm going to take Gini Wijnaldum off and I'm going to bring Coutinho on. I think Coutinho and Naby Keita will just push forwards a little bit more. A little bit more attacking minded than Gini Wijnaldum. Because we're 1-0 down and we certainly need a goal early on as Bobby Firmino kicks us off in the second half. Let's hope we can find it and we can put this game back to level terms. Sandro Tonali trying to give it through to Coutinho. Not going to happen. Naby Keita. Coutinho, now looks to bend the one through to Bobby Firmino, it's a big save, Sandro Tonali going to try and keep this alive, ball in, Mane, into Naby Keita, how have we not scored? Unbelievable, well done Sandro Tonali for keeping that ball in, but how have we not scored here? There's Coutinho, Sandro Tonali lines one up, going to let one fly, Sandro Tonali with a big strike, and the keeper's kept it out again. Keep that pressure on. Let's go. Come on, let's get the ball off them. Ball into the now for Volland. That's going to be a problem. It's 2 0. They scored. And it's a big moment for them in the match. They've pushed their lead now to two ahead. Absolute heartbreak in this. Absolutely heartbreak. And how are we losing to Everton? What is going on? As a Liverpool fan, this is not what you want to see. We need to pull this back here. Bear through now, Junior. Oh, Snyderland's all over it. Mbappe, going to feed that through now to Mane, here we go, Mane coming forwards now, nicely done, Mane going to cut back on the inside, Mane looks to let one fly, let's follow that up, Coutinho, it's in the back of the net, this is going to be the comeback of dreams if we get it, Coutinho, Trent, Junior and the Ox celebrate in front of the cameras, we're still not winning or drawing just yet, but it's one goal in the right direction, I'm just so glad Coutinho is there, keep a palms it away, Coutinho there to head that one home, Ball over the top. Come on, Trent. You've got to get him behind some ball into the middle now for Sigerson. Sigerson looks at laying this off. Gomez was there. Play it through now. Is the Ox. 
to Sandro Tonali. Let's go out wide. Go on, Mbappe. Go, son. Play it through now to Mbappe. Mbappe through on goal. Mbappe. Mbappe. It's saved. Let's pull it back. Into Mbappe. Mbappe going to feed one through now to Junior. Let's cut it back onto his left foot. Junior. And again, Junior. Poke it home. How is the keeper stopping that? How is the keeper stopping that? Oh, we're going to have to go with Trent here. Let's go, Trent. Come on. And back to stay in a good position for me. Come on. Show me that you're worth all this money that we paid for you. Ball in now. Into Mbappe. Mbappe. Oh, it's off the post. Follow it up. Oh, that is unbelievable. Mbappe and Mane was there with that ball. Oh, my word. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, Mbappe. Play it through. Nice and done. Here's Sandro Tonali. Mbappe. Edge of the box. Mbappe shoots. It's off. The keeper's hand and out for the corner. We've got our last chance here. We don't score from this. And it's game over. Can Van Dijk be the man to score this for us? Come on, Van Dijk. We need it. Ball in. Van Dijk. Great position. Van Dijk was here to clear the way. Only as far as the Ox. Come on, Ox. Let's go. Put it into the middle. Oh, unbelievable. It's an absolute sickener. I literally jinxed myself at the start of the game, didn't I, lads? We've never lost to Everton in three seasons. And we do just that, we lose to Everton. As inevitably will happen at this level of the game, has a bit of an off day. Well, you get beaten. Oh, what an absolute killer. You know, when I look at the stats, they're not even going to deserve this either, are they? They're just not going to deserve it. That is the problem here. That's going to be the frustrating thing. I don't think stat-wise... <laughs> oh, my word. Everton, four shots, three on target, two in the back of the net. We have 19 shots, 13 of them on target, and we only put one in the back of the net. If I don't laugh, I'll cry. What a very, very disappointing game at Goodison Park. Well, here we are at match day, about to face off against Chelsea. Now, I'm a little bit gutted now. Because that loss to Everton may well have just dropped a few heads and may have put us in a bit of a problem when we come up to simulate this game against Chelsea. It's also the fact that we're now only 12 points clear on second position, Chelsea. 12 points is still absolutely unbelievable considering we are ending January in this episode. We're going in to the month of February. We've got February, March, April, May. We've got four months left and we're already 12 points clear. I would have liked to have pushed and pushed as much as we possibly can. But I think that Everton loss has just give us a little bit of a uh, a little bit of a thought in the back of our mind that this Premier League is not won yet. Twelve points, although it's great to be twelve points clear, it is certainly not over yet. But we are simulating this game against Chelsea, and this is the lineup we are putting out of them against them, should I say? Unfortunately, the usual starting eleven that I would like to play isn't fully fit. I'm even risking Van Dijk with that much energy. Because we just need to be playing the best team that we possibly can and need to keep Van Dijk in there. But we've got Ryan Cessna on the left wing, Tim Averna, a striker, Salah out on the right wing, Gino Ronaldo linking up with the Ox in the central midfield roles. A little deeper we've got Fabinho in the central defensive midfield. And then Tierney, Van Dijk, Jimenez and Semedo at the back with Allison between the six. I'm kind of hopeful that the assistant manager will take Van Dijk off in this game against Chelsea. But let's go ahead and advance, get the players warmed up. We need to win this game. But it's in the hands of the EA gods. Referee blows his whistle and Alexandra, their left back, has scored after just four minutes. Come on, lads. We've got to up our game here. Ryan Sessegnol equalises in the 18th minute. It's back to 1-1. Can we find a second before half-time? Half-time fast approaching 40 minutes. 45. We're into the second half now. Come on, lads. Tierney picks up a yellow card in the 49th. Come on. Van Dijk has scored in the 58th. I said I was going to leave Mont and Tim over it. Oh, I'm losing track. Jonathan Tarr come on for Van Dijk in the 64th. Tim Ovin has scored to put us 3-1 up. And the referee has now blown his whistle. Sorry, guys. I got my, I got all muddled up there. I left Van Dijk in and he scored to put us 2-1 up. Jonathan Tarr then come on for Van Dijk, which is exactly what I said. I wanted Van Dijk off because he wasn't fully fit going into the game. Tim Ovin, who scored four in the first game of today's episode against Fleetwood Town, has now just scored another, which in today's episode, he's just added... Five goals to his tally, which means £5 added to the pot for the charity donation at the end of the season. Absolutely unbelievable. Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain picking up a yellow card in the 19th, and then a second yellow in the 77th and getting sent off. Not good news whatsoever. But regardless, we beat Chelsea, and we only had a 12-point gap. We are back, depending on how the other teams have got on, 
back to that 15 point gap which is exactly what we needed to do after that ridiculous awful terrible oh, nightmare of a 2-1 loss to Everton Right, guys, and here we are for the last 10 hours. We're back at the Central for the final time in today's episode. We've got the last 10 hours of the transfer deadline day on the 31st of January. And the only last transfer we need to do is bring an uh, Mbapp. Bring an Mbapp. Bring an Matip back to Liverpool. So let's see. We can approach him now, so let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. Now, last time we got him for 20 million, so let's offer the 20 million again. And hopefully we can just get him this time round on a decent contract. 20 mil, what we're saying. So we had 500 million to spend. We've spent pretty much half of that. Now, bearing in mind, we haven't had the wages taken. 27.5 and a sell-on clause, just accept it. I mean, this is just ridiculous. We're, we're leaving at the end of the season. We're retiring, so it doesn't matter how much we spend. Then day, we had half a billion pounds, 500 million to spend. And I thought, you know what? Let's spend it. Let's get some ex-Liverpool players, get some still current Liverpool players, and let's get some unrealistic signings. M Mbappe has come in. And we've spent a huge amount on him, 140 million. And we also signed Messi, but his money has not come out of the transfer budget because we only got him on a wage budget as we got him on basically a free. We didn't have to pay any money for him. So rotation, that's fine. Five years. Let's just get through this. Come on, he wants three years. That's fine. Three years is fine. Let's just keep this rolling. Now, obviously, guys, I forgot to mention that I'm not selling anyone now. Any Liverpool players that are at Liverpool in this career mode, we're not selling anyone. I know a few people said, Brad, would you sell Anderson to Liske? No. Anyone we've got now is staying. So let's just offer him just, just for the sake of it to get it done. 90 and just give him a million. Give him 16,000 pay rise and a million. He still wants more. Are you mad? Right, counter. Remove that bonus and just stick that up a little bit. Oh, come on, Matt. If you're taking the mick here now, we're bringing you back to Liverpool. There you go. It's not quite what my client was looking for. 115k. So there you go, guys. All the signings are done. And we've got Pepe Reina and Leo Messi, the GOAT, joining us in Season 4. Obviously, we're not going to be doing it in the Season 4. And I know once I end this career mode, there's not going to be a computer carrying it on. But in my mind, I just pretend that a new manager is going to come in and carry on with the team that we leave them. And we have left them an absolutely unbelievable team. Unbelievable team we've left them. Now we're just going to skip through these last few hours, guys. I'm sure we're going to have plenty of transfers. We can just go and delete everything. We're not doing anything whatsoever. We don't need to sign anyone. We've brought current Liverpool players back. We've brought old Liverpool players back. We've brought unrealistic signings in. We've done everything that I set out and you guys wanted me to do. We've done it. It's completed. Let's just get into the month of February and focus now on the competitions we are still left in. We don't want to sell Ryan Brewster. Go, 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 go. I can't believe we're only 79 overall manager. That's just absolutely crazy. Let's go, 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 go. But there you have it. Manchester City are now joint second with Chelsea after playing 23 with 44 points. We're on 59, which means we've grown that gap back to 15 points, which I am very happy about. And I think if we get to the end of Feb and we are more than 20 points clear, I would probably say that the league is going to be ours. So we have got the final. In fact, let's have a look at what the next games are going to be in the month of February. So we've got Manchester City in the Premier League, Fulham in the Premier League, and Huddersfield also in the Premier League. And then that's going to be episode 50, uh, 50? 85. And then episode 86 is a big one. We've got the knockout stages, our first game against Barcelona in the Champions League. We've got Southampton at home. And then we've got Arsenal in the final of the Carabao Cup. Another trophy that we could potentially tick off. We need to win that game against Arsenal. So we definitely will be playing the Barca game and the Arsenal game and simulating the Southampton game. As for the next episode, it's probably going to be play City, simulate Fulham because we're at home and play the Huddersfield game. But we've got some cracking games coming up in February. March is looking quite quiet right now, but I'm sure that is going to get jam-packed with plenty of games. But that is going to do it for today's episode, guys. And hopefully you have enjoyed it. And if you have, please do give it a big thumbs up for me. Don't forget to drop your comments down below. If you're new around here, click that subscribe button. Don't forget to share this video with your friends and family. And I've been Massive Brad. Peace out.